Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Laurie Lewis, who is up in the wilds in the mountains of uh, Colorado. How are you doing, Laurie? I'm doing great, John. And I love the name of your business, Sales Pop, by the way. I meant to tell you before. <laughs> yeah, and your company is, uh, is called... Um, fast forward. Yes, fast, fast forward. forward. Wellness. I had to fast add forward. wellness because that yeah. was the URL that was available, but it's fast. Right, forward. fast forward. Okay, and you have helped people and changed the lives of so many different people, um, using coaching people on the concept of intermittent fasting. Um, which is the thing, I mean, I think people have heard a little bit more about it nowadays. Maybe there's some, you know, um, high profile people who may talk about it. But I think generally it's a bit of a mystery because I think to most people, the idea of intermittent fasting, number one, it sounds sounds hard. <laughs> exactly. And hard and scary. <laughs> hard. And I was going to say, I didn't want to say and terrifying, but uh, <laughs> but it does. Um, however, uh, and I think that's uh, so hopefully you can tell us now, number one, why it's not scary. Um, and second off, what are the benefits of it? And for our audience, right, particularly a lot of those people in, in sales and other performance based um, uh, roles, you know, being energetic, being upbeat, being on all of those things are, are critically important. So anything that can help you in that area is a good thing. So, all right, let's uh, Let's get to it. So, I mean, first of all, um, Laurie, how did you come upon intermittent fasting and what convinced you that this was something that you wanted to dedicate your career to? Well, I was on fire in my 40s. I felt like I'd reached my stride. I was at my, you know, I was high performance. I've been in sales my whole I say career, but really my whole life when I was dragging my little wagon up and down the mountain dirt roads selling kool-aid and homemade cookies to the construction workers <laughs> so but there i was in my 40s which was a while ago and um i was running marathons i was lean i, I had a personal interest in nutrition for my own right. self i never wanted to or expected to be the food police and i'm still not by the way mm. and um menopause took me down. I think all women deserve a big crown and a lot of accolades and we shouldn't be shy about saying menopause because it's quite an extraordinary, mm -hmm. remarkable shift for <laughs> us to endure. And it comes as a big surprise. They don't send us to biology class for older ladies. So I, it took me out, as I said, and then the, the cherry on top of it all was that I suddenly gained 50 pounds. So if you ever look at an older woman and you think she let herself go, nope, it's hormonal. Mm -hmm. And actually all weight issues and weight loss is a matter of hormones. Insulin being the grandmother of all right. hormones that um, has us actually mm -hmm. store fat. So there I was miserable, brain foggy, loss of memory, equilibrium off and 50 pounds heavier and depressed. Yeah. <laughs> and so I found out after struggling for four and a half years, I was here at home in Colorado visiting my mother. I actually lived in New York City for just about 25 years and mm -hmm. I now live in Portland, Oregon. So I'm hitting all the coasts in the middle. So I was home visiting mom and she said, let's take this time that you're home to turn the weight around. Wow. Okay. So your ears might hear that as helpful. My daughter. Yeah, no, no, no. I can. I, I, no, I, I, I understand. I understand having, um, you know, my, my wife has written a couple of books on, on has she? Oh. And eating disorders and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm very aware that a lot of people listening, yeah, probably have that reaction, probably say, oh, wasn't that really nice of your mom to say that and everything. But in reality, tell the audience what you heard. I heard, are you freaking kidding me? Like I've been sitting around eating cupcakes, you know, not trying for four and a half years, what, you know? So I wailed and cried and uh, she was very loving and listened intently and realized that that wasn't the most <laughs> thoughtful thing to say to a daughter who's miserable. And uh, you know, you, you could be 50, I was 54 years old, I was 50, I, 54 year old who turned into a four year old in a matter of 30 seconds. I'm, always, I'm like that at the dentist every time. <laughs> 
I even told the dentist the other day, I said, I said, you know, it's the only place I, I, could, I go where the moment I walk through the door, I revert to being a child. Well, this is good news for you, John Golden, because I'm going to interrupt myself. I'll interrupt my own story. If there's anything that will make you happy about intermittent fasting, it's that the dentist visits get very easy. My teeth cleaning, there's no pl plaque, no tartar. My gums are healthy. And the dentist sends me away, like just astonished that my, my dental health is so extraordinary now. So, okay. So I, uh, my mom said, let's pray for an answer because that seemed like the only thing left to do. Mm -hmm. And I went upstairs in her house and tucked in for the night. And as we do to th these days, I opened up my phone mm -hmm. <laughs> and I Googled that I, you know, I had for years, something like menopausal, hormonal, stubborn fat, help me, you know, older woman, mm -hmm. what have you. And up popped the words intermittent fasting. I'd never heard those two words together. And I stayed up all night watching videos and reading articles. And I stumbled down in the morning and I said, I think I may have found an answer. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to stop eating. You know, intermittent fasting is simply a pattern. You mm -hmm. pause from eating and then you eat in an eating window. And so I, I explained it to her and she said, that sounds amazing. How may I support you? And I have not missed a day in about 1400 days. So I'm rounding out uh, four years now. Wow. And I lost the 51 pounds in 15 months, but most importantly, I felt like myself within three days. So when you say it sounds hard and you say it sounds scary, the remarkable thing is human beings are designed to pause from eating. And so when we do, our body's like, thank you. I feel so much better. <laughs> so that's what happened. Yeah, that, that's that's fascinating. So let's get into it a little bit. So when you say intermittent fasting, are you um, how long are you fasting for or does that vary? It varies. It's individual. It's customized. Mm -hmm. So you start with your own constitution. I would I would suspect that a lot of salespeople are shoot right out of the gates. People it's like, mm -hmm. let me like the story of the tortoise and the hare. I, mm -hmm. I could be generalizing, but I yeah, think probably that a, we kind of, a, a, a kind of monster in one hand and an energy bar in the other. <laughs> exactly. some, some candy in their top pocket just in case they lose, you know, just have a lull at some stage. And we want to win. We want to win, right? So let's go. Like, why would slower be better? Okay, so you may begin at with a schedule of 12-12. You take the 24-hour day, you divide it into however you please, the fasting hours and the eating window. 12-12 has proven to increase longevity. So if a person is fit and strong, doesn't have an ounce to lose, um, you know, wants to ward off Alzheimer's and maybe cure some digestion issues and sleep better, you could set the time today. What day? What time are you going to stop eating today? You could say seven, six, eight. It's entirely up to you. Drink plain water, go to sleep, have a good sleep, wake up tomorrow, drink plain black coffee, drink plain water. And 12 hours later, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., let's say, have your breakfast or have your creamy coffee, have the nutrients or flavors or, um, you know, food mm -hmm. drinks count as food, by the way, <laughs> people right, are like, right, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't eat breakfast. Yeah. I'm like, what do you have in your coffee? Oh, cream and stevia and cream flavored, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> Irish mint, yeah. uh, creamer. No, <laughs> that's not so when you, when you, when you start this initially though, how do you, so when most people stop eating, you know, for a, for a number of hours or maybe a day or, you know, some people go, oh, I've, I've been so busy today. I haven't eaten. Yes. The, rea the reaction normally is overeating then, right? Because you're so hungry and then you eat more and more and then, you know, you're not really satisfied. So how does, how, how do you overcome that part? Well, that I, I love that you asked that because actually the body does better when we're in a fasted state. So everybody knows that feeling that you just said, oh my gosh, I was so busy. I, mm -hmm. I just didn't even eat all day. And you're usually like bright and attentive and focused and productive. And then all of a sudden you go, oh my God, I should probably eat something because you might have a little blood sugar thing or what have you. You might feel like you're eating a lot, but your body will tell you when to stop. And especially after you've been in intermittent fasting for a while, what happens is you shift from being a quote sugar burner, burning off mm -hmm. glucose and glycogen, and your body shifts when insulin is low 
into being a fat burner. And that's what provides that focused clarity that we intermittent fasters or we people who eat in a pattern of time kind of crave because there's not that energy crash. We just have good, long, sustained energy. And then when you feel like maybe you eat more, your body self-corrects. And in the beginning, all intermittent fasters absolutely are like, yay, my eating window's open, shoving all the food. And <laughs> very quickly, the body's like, yeah, no, I'm not enjoying that either. <laughs> and so if somebody is to do this, this is obviously, I mean, like anything that is going to have a long-term impact, it's got to be a lifestyle choice, right? So this isn't something you can dip in and out of, or is it? Well, it's not in that the body is designed to pause from eating. The body is mm -hmm. so darn happy that you're giving it this rest and repair. In the very beginning, when you introduced me, I said, I think you said something like intermittent fasting is this thing or it's a thing, whatever. I, <laughs> I love that you said that because people do think it's a thing. Like it's this mm -hmm. trendy thing or it's the new thing or there's keto or there's Atkins or there's South Beach or there's intermittent fasting. Well, Let's liken it to sleep. What if I called you, John, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this thing. Here's what you do. You get horizontal, you close your eyes and you keep <laughs> them closed for a considerable amount of time. And when you wake up the next morning, you feel better. It's called sleep. Do you want to do it with me? We'll try it for 30 days and see if we like it or not. See if it works for us or not. And then we could try something else. We could try another thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, sleep is imperative. Fasting is imperative. We feel better when we're fasting. And so that healing repair is what we are designed to experience. And we then, once we're doing it consistently, as uh, you asked, is that a lifestyle? Of course, it's a lifestyle because this is what we're supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. in this modern time, you could say, well, then why are we hiring you, Lori Lewis? To, why are we giving you mm -hmm. money to teach us how to stop eating? Well, it's hard for people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It's hard. Uh, ab <laughs> absolute, uh, absolutely. So what is so so for, for people listening, what is going on? So what's going on during the fasting period for your body, as you said, what, what's right. your body doing that it can't do while you're eating? Oh, so many amazing things. Okay. So first off, you are, we are keeping insulin low. Insulin is a blood glucose regulator, and it's also a fat storage mechanism. And so by not eating, by not taking in flavors, by not taking in any nutrients, so people are like, my diet Coke is good, no calories. No, do you know how much flavor is in that? So that sends the food communication to the body actually. Oh, okay. So no lemon, no, like plain, 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 unflavored, save all the flavor party for your eating window. So we're keeping insulin low and tapping into our fat stores. That process of becoming fat adapted, using fat for fuel takes anywhere between two and six weeks, depending on what you eat, how healthy you are in advance of beginning, um, mm -hmm. what you're, you know, if you have high circulating insulin or you're type two diabetic, um, there's an amazing book by Dr. Jason Fung called The Obesity Code. And then he followed it up with a book called The Diabetes Code. And I'm most excited about having people reverse their type two diabetes or pre-diabetes or high circulating insulin. So we keep insulin low, we tap into fat. Then what happens is all sorts of healing happens. Every cell in the body heals and repairs and restores itself when we're in a fasted state. So for example, the gut, our brain. So what mm -hmm. happens is when our body releases fat from a fat cell and the fat flows through the bloodstream, goes through our liver, creates what we call ketone bodies. There are many types, but three top types of ketones that then pass through the blood brain barrier and fuel our brain on ketones. Now there are tiny parts of the brain that need glucose, but not mm -hmm. most of it. And within a few years, 50% of Americans, or it's, I think it's the next generation, 50% of our next generation are going to have Alzheimer's in their life, unless we turn this around and they're calling Alzheimer's type three diabetes. So we need to stop fueling our brains on sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's another process called autophagy that a Japanese researcher received the Nobel prize in 2016 for his study of autophagy, which is a deep 
cellular repair that happens in tandem. They're not correlated. They happen in parallel um, with fat burning. So the ketosis happens, the autophagy happens, and then HGH, human growth hormone, the anti-aging hormone, hormone mm. increases a thousand percent when you're in a fasted state. And then if you're exercising when fasted, that ramps it up even more. So, yes. so I was going to ask you about, it's going to ask you about that. So, um, yeah. the, so the exercise, the exercise component, cause most people would think, okay, if I'm, if I'm fasting or slash hungry, I'm not going to exercise as well as I would if I had taken some fuel on board. Well, when you're exercising, don't you actually want to tap into your own fat as opposed to what you just ate or drank? So whatever, you know, we want to use the fuel that's kind of at the front of the bus, right? So mm -hmm. if you just ate, that's what your body's using while you're working out. You have, we have plenty of fuel on board. So I'm at my quote, ideal weight. I, the same weight and size I was in high school. And um, I'm still 24% body fat. There's plenty mm -hmm. of fuel on board. I'm not going to run out anytime soon. And mm -hmm. most of us, even men who have less body fat, you still have some. And so it's really remarkable how once you are fat adapted, so I don't recommend at all starting a fasting regimen and ramping up your exercise <laughs> at the same time and changing your diet and so no, 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 slow down. <laughs> Do one thing at a time. You can exercise gently during the first, I don't know, 20, first four weeks, just be gentle. And once you, your body has shifted into being a fat burner, you'll notice that your strength, your speed all increase and that the pleasure of working out in a fasted state is just extraordinary it's enlivening so and does it and does the do those fasting uh periods of time do, when you start off do they do they need to be like 12 hours or do you start off with less i mean how how is if somebody's going to take the first step what is it 12 hours because you're hours. asleep mm -hmm. hopefully for eight of it maybe six mm -hmm. but okay so let's take seven o'clock you stop eating you close your eating window at 7 p.m drink plain water go about your evening if you have typical routines and habits like sitting in front of the TV mm -hmm. or Netflix with your drinks and snacks, that's, that's an adjustment, right? So yeah. do other things, get outside and walk. Um, and you'll, you'll start to create new habits. You know, you can use books like James Clear, Atomic Habits or BJ Fogg, Tiny Habits. They're both mm -hmm. amazing resources. And then seven, I'm sorry, 12 hours later, which would be 7 a.m., eat your breakfast and then inch along. Now it's fine if you rush straight out of the shoots. Many people <laughs> start with a 16, eight. So that would be many, many people say uh, who are new intermittent fasters. I don't eat before noon. And that is a guardrail for them. I don't eat before noon. I don't eat past eight. So they get till noon, have a good lunch, pause again, let insulin come back down and then have a nice big dinner close the eating window at eight. A noon to eight fat eating window is very, very common. Now that's how I started. I just was like, okay, I'm just not going to, mm -hmm. I'll drink black coffee and drink plain water till noon. Boom. Pretty quickly. I was like, I don't even want to eat at noon and I have good energy. Why do I want to interrupt this, you know, mm -hmm. fasting buzz <laughs> by <laughs> eating and um, many high performance people, Jack Dorsey is an example um, eat one meal a day. And that's where I am now, but I eat my one meal spread out over four hours, which is right. fabulous. So it's like, you're having a nice leisurely a meal in a restaurant. You have your little appetizer, maybe a roll and butter and your salad and, you know, some cheese and olives, what have you. And then I wait a little bit and then I'll have my main course, a drink, maybe a dessert sometimes if I feel like it and that's four hours, boom, done. Yeah. And, and so in that, in, in the eating part of this, are you ensure, are you making sure that you're eating healthy, that you're eating clean, that you're eat? I mean, uh, what I'm, I'm saying is like, are some people like, you know, fasting and then just like going, you know, eating whatever they want uh, during that 12 yes. hour period. And is there a danger though, that you, you know, just you end up loading up? 
There is. So yes, yes, yes. And yes to everything you said. So I'll break it down. <laughs> so because this isn't a diet or an eating yeah. regimen that's prescribed to you, because we are all different, we're all bio individual. So I can't prescribe to you what are the best foods for you. Like I have clients who are type two diabetics, who have Crohn's disease, who have fibromyalgia, like the spec, who are celiac. You know, like we mm -hmm. all. So each person decides and learns for themselves which right. foods, as I say, eat the foods you love and the foods that love you back. So I'm a disciple and, and actually work with Jen Stevens, who wrote an amazing book called Delay, Don't Deny, and a, a new book called Fast, Feast, Repeat. And people misunderstand what she writes because she says, eat what you want. Well, people are like, turn into toddlers. They're like, eat what you want. The, Jen Stevens said I could eat what I want. And they just eat everything. Okay. Well, I had a client who said to me once, you know, opening my eating window with all that cookie dough just doesn't feel so good. I'm like, <laughs> who told like, come on people grow up. <laughs> you know. So eat what you want means you get to choose, pay right. attention to what your body needs. And as I said, don't go on a whole big diet and eat new eating plan and learn how to intermittent fast. So here's the thing. Start with 12-12 if you want to. Inch along, inch up to 16-8 or start right away with 16-8. Then settle in there. Eat your two meals. You know, play around with it. Shoot for a 20-hour fast someday in the future. And then maybe settle back into 18. Everybody is in their own flow with their own goals, their own family schedule, we don't have much of a social life right now, but someday mm. we will. You know? yeah. And um, which so may we're... which may be uh, which may be playing a part at the the hard to uh, hard to fast bit. Seen as uh, you know, I was seeing what something the other day it was just a, a skit or whatever, where you see these people working from home, like with the fridge and just arms reach. I know, oh, yeah. but it has been a very good time for a lot oh. of people to learn how to intermittent yeah, fast yeah, yeah, yeah. because you know, when, when the doors are open again and all, everything's open again, <laughs> we're going to be overwhelmed. If you yeah. think this isn't a good time to start intermittent fasting, you think later when we're eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner in restaurants and bars and partying in the streets is a good time. Yeah, like, no, I, I agree. Time. I think this has been a great time to do lots of, yeah. um, you know, lots of self, self-improvement work and, and, you know, to focus on yourself a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, um, so great. So this, this is fascinating. I'm really glad you've explained this because as I, as we as I did say at the beginning a lot of people talk about this as a thing now as a latest fad or whatever and you know it's good to hear the hear the reality of it and I think the thing that I think is most surprising and probably surprised people the most is that is when you say that during that period of fasting that you're actually going to be more clear-headed and more energetic um, than than you would if you were in your normal eating eating um, patterns, and that is counterintuitive to most people because they would yes. you know naturally assume I'm going to be hangry, I'm going to be cranky, and uh, you know I'm going to, my energy levels are going to go down. So I think that's the, that's a critically important. If you just want to unla underline that one more time, because I think that's a critically important thing for people to understand. It is, and I like to say that dieting is easy to envision because we've done plenty of it. Mm -hmm. Dieting is easy to envision and actually hard to execute. We can't sustain that. Mm -hmm. But fasting is hard to envision and easy to execute. Within three days to seven days, you will feel so much better. And everybody just wants to feel better. Every, mm -hmm. Nobody wants that lull of energy in the middle of the day. Like one of the biggest surprises for me in my healing journey with intermittent fasting was I had debilitating plantar fasciitis for 10 years, that horrible pain shooting from the mm -hmm. bottom of my feet to the top of my head and hobbling around even, I mean, I think it was exacerbated by being a marathon runner, but that's neither here sure. nor there. <laughs> so within three to four months, I can't remember exactly when I noticed one day, oh my gosh, it's gone. And John, that is one of the most common results because plantar fasciitis is a matter of inflama inflammation. It's mm -hmm. not a you know, all these shoe braces and all these things yeah, to make yeah, us yeah. feel better. And so it's easier to execute than you would imagine. And what's hard about it and why a person can benefit from having a coach is 
it is hard to stick to the schedule. If you think of our ancestors, they didn't have all the distractions we have. And as you said, the fridge literally like an inch away from our hand and right out of sight of the camera. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and that- I've just been um, sneaking chocolate bars here when you're not looking, but that's okay. The camaraderie. <laughs> I, I know they're right, right at an arm's length. And so we've been taught erroneously that we're supposed to eat all the time. This breakfast is the most important meal of the day was coined by Kellogg's food company over a hundred years ago. And then I call it medical mythology. It's like when a food company coins a slogan and then suddenly doctors start believing that, that that's mm-hmm. medically accurate when there's no research to prove that. Mm-hmm. So we are designed to eat less and our ancestors did not have the temptation of coping with stress by overindulging with food. I know it's comforting. Mm. I know it has a seem to feel better, which is an addiction and of the gut microbiome informing our brain that we should be eating all these sugary foods and intermittent fasting helps us break that habit pretty quickly. Mm. Well, this has been fantastic, Laurie. I'm so glad you came on today and explained that for everybody. Um, all of Laurie's information is going to be below this video and, and links to her site. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about the kind of coaching you offer. I do. I love it. So I offer one-on-one personalized coaching and group programs that I've designed and I deliver on Zoom. And I was a Zoom pioneer years ago. I used to have to teach everyone how to use it. And now I don't anymore. It saves me some time. And um, I love both equally. So my website, fastforwardwellness.com has both the group programs and the one-on-one coaching. Obviously, one-on-one is more flexible time-wise and 100% customized. And then the group programs are delightful because we do learn from each other. Someone else will ask the exact question that you had, or someone else will have some wonderful benefit like sleeping better or notice something about... Um, how they feel. And it's like, oh my gosh, that happened to me too. I didn't even realize. So both are spectacular. Love the group, love the one-on-one. And I really adore working with people. I mean, the reason my business started is because a whole ton of friends cornered me at a wedding right. in the middle of 2018. They're like, you have to teach us how you have to have a class. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do that. And then 20 people joined my first program during the holidays, if you can imagine. Wow, wow. And, um, was off and running. It's it's That's a fantastic. great joy. Great joy. Well, listen, well, listen. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, as I said, all Laurie's information will be below this video. My name is John Golden. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.